Let's talk about overlays in Adobe Premiere, and this is a strategy where you have a piece of footage on top of another piece of footage, but you have them somewhat transparent, somewhat interacting. It's very similar to a double exposure effect in photography, where you might have a texture and an individual, and the two interact in a way that makes the person look like they have a particular kind of skin effect. So an overlay does not have to be a texture on top of a person. It can be this piece of footage on top of the same piece of footage. It can be a effect like a scratchy film on top of this to make it look old and degraded. But for starters, we are going to just raise the same piece of footage on top of itself. And the way I did this is hold the footage Hold Alt on my computer. While holding Alt, I dragged it to V4, which is the next video track, and now I have one piece of footage on top of the other. I've offset the footage by a few frames, so it starts a little later, and with that footage selected, I go to the Effects menu, I set the opacity at 48%, and now you can see what are tracers. So. The top layer starts a little later than the bottom layer, and it's transparent enough that I can see two things happening at the same time. This is very similar to the effect Echo, but it just utilizes the same piece of footage offset by a few frames. Let's see what happens when we reposition our footage so they are the same equal time length, but we will right click in our top layer choose speed duration and set it to reverse. Now we have a ghostly echo that aligns in the center of our footage but runs opposite the further away you get from the center. That's one way you can combine time effects and overlays. Now that we've seen what happens when we have the same piece of footage overlaid and sort of set to a different time than its underlying layer, let's see what happens when we put texture layers on. So we have a photograph of hands and we have some cloud layers. Let's take the hands. We're going to stretch it out to match the entire piece of footage. Just to make things slightly different, we're going to take our footage of the woman and put her on top of the texture. We go into the blending modes, and the blend modes are under the opacity menu in your effects controls. When we switch the blend mode to lighter color, you can see through the dark areas of the model to the underlying texture. You can also see some of this white area has the texture showing, and that might not be what you want, so you will have to go into your effects menu in the lower left corner and mess with brightness and contrast if you really want to knock out some of that bit that's showing. I'm going to play with the brightness a little bit until it goes pure white around my model. That's a still image blended with video footage. It looks okay, but you have to remember when we watch videos, we really like to see a lot of motion on the screen. We want to hold people's interest. I want to do one more thing to see if I can make this still image blend a little bit better with the photograph. So I'm going to apply the Lumetri monochrome punch, make it nice and black and white, and then I'm going to mess around with brightness and contrast to see if there's a way that I can take away from some of the ugliness of the colors that uh, really distract me from the way the model looks. I want it to be more of a blend of the still image and the model rather than having her be a complete whole showing colors that don't match. It's fine to blend a still image and a piece of moving footage, but things get really interesting when you blend two pieces of moving footage. And in this case, we're going to put clouds, and I consider clouds a texture layer. Uh, a lot of nature footage is ideal for this, like running water or fire. It looks really good when blended with a person.
I feel like it makes my model look a lot more like some kind of cosmic entity. What if the model is still and the footage is moving? Let's see how that looks. As far as what blending mode looks good on your pictures, you're gonna have to play around with them. Every scenario is a little bit different. I have been using lighter color, but often I use multiply or overlay, and I might not have opacity set all the way up to 100%. It really depends. So now we have the model that's still. She has the clouds blending through her. This creates surrealism in the sense that we expect that model to be moving and not a still photograph. This lends itself to the idea that we, the viewer has expectations of how things will flow in your video. And if you upset those expectations, it creates a surreal effect. One strategy if you want to blend two still images is simply have the image pan underneath. So I'm going to take this layer, I'm going to set the stopwatch on position. If you want to work with two still images and still have a little bit of motion while doing your overlays, you can use the position and scale functions under motion. All you need to do is turn on the stopwatch to place your keyframes at the start of your footage and at the end of your footage or the end of where you want things to stop moving you set the other keyframe. So in this scenario, I might have the image of the model scale up or down or move side to side over a defined duration of time. I have to be careful because the exterior of the frame ends and you'll see the edge of the white, which isn't really what I want to do. If I scale the image slightly and have the white part starts on the left side of the frame. It's still a surreal effect, it's still a video even though we're dealing with two stills. Let's go ahead and add that monochrome punch to the lower layer because I don't like when textures are really obvious. It's uh, currently just a picture of a girl plus some roof tiles. And if I go ahead and make those black and white and then if I add some contrast and hold the curves down significantly, then it becomes more about the person who was my subject of the video to begin with. The whole concept of surrealism has to do with feelings and emotions and unreality. So we are really trying to get away from the natural world, the ordinary world, in any way we can. Overlays are a wonderful way to do that because it is taking something that is normal and stepping it to a world where it has other properties, where time doesn't work the way we expect it to, where things move opposite of our expectations. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more creative tutorials, gear reviews and video art. Also check out our Patreon for weekly bonus videos and model photography sets.